Hey everyone, I hope you all are having a wonderful day. Um, I forgot to record an, an intro to this one before I started painting, so I will just tell you now, I used the uh, Ranger brand, the Tim Holtz Ranger alcohol inks in Current and Slate for this one, along with the Pinata by Jacquard brass color. So my favorite go-to metallic that uh, is the one that I use the most for any of you all who've watched my videos before, you already know that. All right, so I already knew on this one that I wanted to, uh, you know, I kind of have my shape planned out what I wanted to do. And so I was stretching that out and I had wanted my metallic to blend in with the um, the current, which is what I put down first, I wanted to blend in a little bit with it because I wanted um, some shimmery current color, basically, is what <laughs> what it'll do. Uh, so <clears throat> that's one reason I was uh, tilting it back and forth there, and I kind of folded it. Well, I didn't fold it, but, you know, um, squeezed it in toward the middle to try and keep it from running too far. Now, I did, on this right here, I did turn my dryer on just low heat on this part. Um, most of you all know, who've watched me before, I almost exclusively use mine on the cool setting. But I did not want the ink to spread out right here any more than it already was. So, and the, the low heat blows less air. So I was trying to blow less air and went ahead and got it warm just so it would dry just a touch faster because this part, you know, wasn't really important to me how it looked right here other than just kind of keeping it all together in the middle there. I just didn't want to spread it out yet. Um, so, but I did, once I got done drying this initial puddle of, ink and alcohol that I put down, um, I did go back to using the cool setting for the, the rest of the painting, unless I was laying down another large swath of alcohol similar to this. I think I forgot to mention, I also used 91% alcohol in this. I, I think I actually used a mixture of 91 and 99. Uh, because I had found a bottle of 91 that I wanted to finish off and just kind of mixed it. So we'll say it was 95. How's that? <laughs> Somewhere around 95% uh, isopropyl alcohol. Uh, for those of you who are brand new, who have not tried this before at all, do not use alcohol that's lower than 91% isopropyl. It needs to be as pure as you can get it. The 99 is actually a little bit better. You'll have a little less problem with water beading on your paper if you use the 99. Since, you know, the, the extra 9% in uh, 91 is actually just distilled water. So, you know, obviously the more pure alcohol you can get, the better. Um, I do order mine from Amazon. The... I. Some people have said that they found 99 in their local pharmacies, Walgreens, CVS, uh, whatever pharmacies happen to be near you like that if you're in the U.S. I'm not sure about um, other countries, the pharmacy names. But I have never been able to find 99 at any of the pharmacies here around the Tri-Cities. I uh, have found 91 but in fact pretty much all of them have 91 but that's as high of a percentage as I can find so I do order mine from Amazon and there is a link in the description box to the one that I order uh, if you wanted to check that out it is like several bottles at a time because I go through quite a bit of it so I don't want to just get one at a time if you uh, don't want that many bottles at one time you can just do a search for it and there are ways there are places you can order it from that just do one bottle instead of several <coughs> oh excuse me <clears throat> so all right so i just picked an end to start on i decided which way i wanted my 
Wispies to go and just started um, putting some ink down at the edge of the puddle that I have down there initially then sort of blow it into the the puddle of ink blow it back out so that you've picked up some of the ink that has dried in that puddle and then blow it back in again and you know sometimes I only need to do this a couple of times sometimes I need to do it several times sometimes I'll blow the ink back in and feel like it's just not dark enough so you know I'll I'll keep on doing it a time or two and one thing that I had um, a tip that I had given someone else that I had never thought to um, share with you all I guess is that a lot of people you see they sort of just circle around and around their ink puddle well I don't do that you will rarely see me just continue to circle unless I'm trying to keep it in, in that initial puddle if I want it to dry just right there once I start trying to spread it out and and get the edges soft and wispy I you, you watch I will jump around from side to side and back and forth just I, I don't know it's and I'm not sure how to tell you when you know to do this you just it just is practice it's for me now it's just kind of an instinct I just know when I need to move and catch that ink somewhere else and that's really what to watch for is watch for your ink to build up into um, a little bit thicker spot or like you know your your puddle is going to get a, just a touch deeper on one side and if you don't catch that chances are really good that it's going to spread out into those little fingers that uh, most of you all don't like and I don't like on mine I that that drives me insane and that was one of the things that when I first started that I really struggled with was not getting those little fingers of ink on there um all right, so on this one, I kept blowing back in towards that center line because I did want to keep, you know, a, a line in the center of this one. Now, some I don't necessarily do that, but, but this style I did. And I always came in at an angle. It's, this is one of those that, as you saw at the beginning, is going to end up looking sort of like a shock of wheat or something. Um so I always kept coming back in at that same angle. And I didn't really worry about what it looked like down below where I was working because I knew I would be working my way down there and could fix that part as I got down to it. So, oh, I'm getting interrupted for a kiss. <laughs> got a kiss from my Maddie Pie. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see now my concentration's totally broken um so well anyway that's uh okay there you see i put down another drop of ink because my as i was coming out with the ink my wispies for lack of a better thing to call them i was coming off with everything was just too light I didn't get quite enough ink down in my initial puddle, so I I put some more down there. And you'll notice I did not put alcohol down on top of the ink this time. I just let it go. Well, there I put just a touch down because I put more gold on that. But I I literally put two drops, one drop on each of the gold because I wanted the color to be a lot more concentrated. I didn't want it to. Uh, to lighten up any until I started spreading it out which is something to keep in mind especially if you're using the lighter more pastel colors that a lot of times in your initial puddle you might not even want to add any alcohol to it until you are ready to start um, spreading it out getting it a little softer looking so I went pretty heavy on the brass on this one. Um, I 
some of them I do and some of them I don't, but the, I love the way the brass looks when it blends with this current color. It, I just think it's gorgeous. This super deep, you know, sort of burgundy red. And it just, it gets so shimmery when the brass blends with it that I just think it's gorgeous. So I went a little overboard with the with the brass on this, but it, it turned out looking pretty good in the end. So I was I was happy with that. And now I just had to start doing the same thing again, <clears throat> which is one reason that this turned out to be such a long video, um, because I did have to start back at the end again and start working my way down. And there you'll see I'd picked up the paintbrush for just a second because I had a, a couple of spots where I felt like the brass wasn't moving and it was showing too much under the red, making it sort of look like a muddy spot under my uh, ink, under the, the current color. So uh, if you see me pick up my brush, that's what I'm doing. I'll just put a little alcohol down and then just use uh, just whatever brush you have, a, a small paint brush or a, an alcohol or makeup brush. I think I was actually using a an old makeup brush. I'm really bad to do that because <laughs> I don't use a lot of the brushes that come like with a makeup bag, so they get repurposed into painting tools. Uh, so I just worked my way back down with this blowing it back in you know, the same as the same as before, trying to pick up some of that new ink and pull it out so that I had a little bit more color in there. Didn't just have one super long dark line coming down through the center of the paper. Um, a quick shout out again for Catherine Babcock from Artistic Insanity. She has posted a um, alcohol ink painting video on her channel, which I thought the painting was just beautiful when it was done. Um, it's it's very relaxing to watch. She's got some really pretty background music on there. Um, she's still new to this, so she approaches it from the that aspect of I'm new to this, and let me really show you all what's involved, because it, it is when you're starting out and you're watching people who've been doing this for a while, it does make you feel very frustrated when you're thinking, oh my gosh, what am I doing wrong? Because I can't, mine don't look anything like theirs. And I still actually get that feeling myself. And I, you know, I've been doing this for, I don't know, almost a year now. I think uh, somewhere around nine or 10 months at this point. So um, and I still get that feeling. There are people's videos that I watch that I get so frustrated because I cannot get the results that they get. But at the same time, I also don't see other people get some of the results that I get. And so, I don't know, maybe they don't try. <laughs> they may not like mine. <laughs> but, uh, you know, there may be you know, people out there who are feeling the same way when they watch my videos. But uh, Catherine is really good about that, uh, about saying, you know, this is, uh, this is what you're you're dealing with. Yeah, you're going to get frustrated, but you just got to keep on going, and you you can come out with a beautiful painting in the end. So, um, anyway, you know, give her channel, check her out if you haven't already. It's Catherine Babcock. It's Catherine with a K, Babcock, B A B, and. Uh, artistic insanity and she's got some uh, tutorials on there as well about uh, alcohol ink painting on vases or sorry not vases but planters and uh, Christmas ornaments so you might want to to give that a chance check that out she does some good work the girls enjoy watching her she doesn't have a lot of videos yet because her channel is is fairly new but uh, yeah, give her a give her a chance and give her a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to her channel if you like what you see. She's a, a very nice lady. She will be happy to answer any questions that you all have too. So 
Um, she's a good one for you all who are just starting out because she can share your pain with the where you're at if you haven't started yet or if you've only just begun. Uh, the, the video that she put on is just her second alcohol ink painting that she has done. And so I thought it was just uh, incredible for the second painting ever. My second one was nowhere near that, or my third, or my fourth, or... <laughs> so she did a, a really good job of getting that, the wispy soft look to that painting. So I will, I will try to remember to put her... I don't think I can link to her channel. Well, I can. I'll put a link to that video um, of that alcohol ink painting that she did uh, in the description box below. And then if you all want to, to check that out, you can. Sorry, I had to stop and get a sip of coffee. Those of you who have watched me for a while know I am a coffee addict. I can't can't get through the day without coffee more than once. All right, so I am sorry for the length of this one. It does seem like it turned out to be a really long one. I I think part of my problem here was I, I did go a little too heavy on the brass in here, and that makes it much more difficult to move your inks when you've got a lot of metallic in it, it thickens them up and they get kind of gummy and sticky and they just, they don't really want to move good. And you don't want to overwork the, the inks once you have your metallic in it though. You gotta be really careful about that because it leaves, if you, if you overwork it, Actually, if you overwork your ink, period, but it's worse when you've got metallics in there. But it, when it dries, it leaves this kind of grainy look on your paper or your surface that you're painting on. So um, just be real cautious about not overworking it. And if you're seeing some of that graininess happen in your paintings, that's a really good guess as to why it might be happening. You may just be overworking your inks a little bit. So when I get down to the end here, you know, it's a little bit trickier to make it look good, but I knew I was going to uh, to add some of the slate and I was gonna come off the, the very end, so I wasn't as worried about it right now with the current, but it is a little bit trickier um, so that you've gotta be careful to, instead of use, running your ink down the center line, you've got to figure out a way to run it back up so that you can have a little bit softer end on it if that's what you want. Or you could just kind of run it down altogether, make it look like, I don't know, flower stems or something, I guess, altogether down there. I haven't tried that, but I'm sure that uh, you could come up with something. I generally do, though, try to, to push mine back up if I end up with enough ink to kind of make one of those little fingers that would run down. Uh, when I reach this very bottom part, I don't want it to go, to, you know, have that little finger of ink running off the end of it there. Uh, let's see, while I've got this going on, I don't really have anything that I can think of at the moment about this particular painting, but let me, Go ahead and mention the links um, to a lot of the things that I use are down below. My Amazon affiliate links and my Arteza affiliate links. Um, if any of you all use some of the Arteza, I think they're called Everblend alcohol ink markers, let me know what you think about those. I'm going to manage to get my hands on some of those one day, but um, I've just got some other things that I want more right now, so I'm saving my money for other things. Um, but let me know what you think about them. I would be really interested to hear. Uh, that's the, the alcohol ink markers are something that I have not used at all. So I keep meaning to get some, and I just keep having other things that I want to get more. So they, they kind of keep getting set on the back burner. 
Uh, don't forget also, seal your artwork. For those of you who have not done this before, uh, alcohol ink is not UV stable. It will fade in the sunlight and it'll fade pretty badly. Uh, you know, it may take it a little while, but it, it will fade out. And so always be sure. Use what I use is the Camar um, varnish by Krylon. I always put that down first. It will not reactivate your inks easily. Now, if you put anything that you use gob on it, you're going to have a problem with. But if you'll use the Camar varnish by Krylon and just mist on several light coats of it, somewhere around four coats. Depending on just how light, you might want to end up going with five or six. <coughs> Excuse me. But wait between each coat and make sure that it's completely dry before you put another coat on it. Otherwise, you're going to end up with the varnish running as well. You'll have kind of drip marks in your varnish if you get a little too heavy with that. So just... I was just cleaning up a little spot where I dripped right there, trying to get that up. Um, after you put on the Camar varnish, use something like the Krylon UV Archival. That is what I use. Um, I There are other UV protectant sprays out there. I don't, I, I, I don't know why I have a preference for that other than that's just what I started out with. So, that it's just what I've stayed with since then. But um, after you've got on your several coats of the Camar varnish and let it dry extremely well, start doing the same thing using the UV archival and let it dry extremely well in between coats and make sure you put light coats on. Don't, don't you know, go out there and spray it like you're trying to to get a good heavy coat on at one time because you will end up with problems if you do that. And also that just, this is something I, I had noticed and actually saw a comment recently by someone uh, on an, uh, an art group about the varnish leaving this slightly bumpy look that it's not smooth anymore like your Yupo or uh, craft plastic or whatever synthetic paper that you're using. Um, and it's not. But it the heavier you put it on, the kind of weirder it's going to get. I, I don't know how to... It, it works better if you put on several thin coats. You want to make sure that, you know, you're, you're coating the entire piece of paper or whatever I'm just gonna say paper um, you want to make sure you're coating the whole thing but you do not want a heavy coat on just light coats and it will do better and someone had actually said that they feel like theirs do better if they prop them up um, I, I tape mine to um, just foam board like foam project board that you can get from Walmart for, I don't know, maybe it's $2 a board or something like that. Um, and you can, depending on the size of your paintings, you know, you can fit. I'm sorry, I'm turning around to look here. Um, eh, somewhere between two, four, five. You know, it just depends on, on how big your paintings are. Um, but you can fit, you know, at, at least two. Even if you're doing like the 11 by 14 sizes, you can fit two of those on them. Um, anyway, they do the same thing. They were taping theirs to boards and they actually prop them up to spray them. And they said they felt like they were not getting as much uh, of that kind of uh, rough texture at when they were finished if they propped it up. You saw, you saw my hands there. I was trying to decide where... I wanted to come off with my next um, little sprig of the slate color because I just couldn't decide where I thought it was going to look the best to come off of that. I, I didn't want to get it up too high, but also didn't want it coming off from the very bottom. So 
I still feel like I actually got it a little lower than maybe I should have, but uh, it, it turned out okay. I didn't want it too high either because it just, then it kind of, to me, would have thrown things off if I had gotten it too high. But I was tracing it out along the paper with my finger just to uh, kind of get that image in my head better of what it was going to look like once it was, uh, once I put that ink down <laughs> right there. So, you know, once I had this, the slate down, I just started using the exact same process that I did with the um, current in just drying my initial ink that I put down and then going back in and starting, I started, sometimes I start at the bottom and just do like maybe one or two at the bottom and then, uh, but normally I will start at the end, kind of the tip of where I want it to be because it's much simpler to blow it down towards the bottom if you start up at the tip of your your color blow it back towards and work your way down yeah there I was just trying to get a little blending on the bottom because I wanted the slate and the current to blend right there a little bit um, but now here's something I did on this one that to watch out for is if you're going to frame these or if you're going to mat these be really careful about getting it uh, anything too close to the edge that you don't want covered up under the the edge of your mat uh, because I did get right down on the the edge with this one now you know you've got a little bit of of wiggle room with your mat that I can probably position this one to where you'll be able to see it fine but there have been times when I've actually lost a part of a just a little bit of a painting some of the wispiest part on the edge because I couldn't uh, keep it from getting covered up by the the edges of the mat <clears throat> so be conscious of that when you're when you're painting if you're thinking that you're going to want to put a mat on it uh, but even if you don't mat it you know if you're thinking about selling your artwork be aware that other people might want to mat you know whoever buys it might want to mat it so you want to be, be sure that you leave them that option Uh, real quickly, this is the acrylic pouring thing that I did, the uh, Arteza um, review video that I did where I tried to do an acrylic pour using Arteza products. Uh, the coupon code is good for Arteza through uh, February 14th. Now, you do not have to buy acrylic pouring products to use that coupon code. Um, it's just Lori Brewer, then the number one. J I'll, I'll put it down below here in the description in case you all want to use it. You can use it for the alcohol ink markers, um, anything on their site that you want to use it for. Just when you go to check out, just enter the coupon code and it should take 10% off of your order automatically. So just don't forget, you know, if there's anything you'd like to try from Arteza, it's a good time to do it while well, you can use that 10% off coupon with it. Um, I was really happy with the Arteza stuff that I used too, by the way. If you didn't watch that video, I know a lot of you are probably much better than I am at acrylic pouring. It's not something I have a great deal of, of practice with. But uh, I, was, I was really happy. I just used the pre-mixed pouring acrylics that they have so that was great for someone like me who is not experienced with how to do the different mixtures I didn't get cells but I think I did also didn't add any silicone had I added some silicone to it I, I'm sure I probably would have gotten some cells out of it <coughs> but I was happy with it <clears throat> and their glitter Heavens, if you all use glitter for anything, any craft projects, they have an amazing set of glitter. 
It's got um, 54 colors in the box that I have, and they're they're decent sized tubes of glitter too. So it's it's great. They even have a glow in the dark glitter in there. I got to figure out what I'm going to do with that. Make something for the girls' bedroom. Um, so anyway, don't forget check out the uh, the Arteza website and use that coupon code before February 14th of 2020 if you want to um, to get 10% off of your order if you decide to order anything from them. But where I was going with that originally was the the alcohol ink stuff, the links like to the dryer that I use and um, some of the other products that I use um, fairly frequently are down below. And those are affiliate links, so anything you all buy through those links, it does help support my channel. Gives me a, a tiny bit of a commission off of it when you all purchase something on Amazon through the Amazon links. So um, I really appreciate those of you who have done that. It, it does help a tiny bit. I certainly don't have any kind of following that's going to make it <laughs> like having a getting a full-time job paycheck, but uh, every little bit does help. It helps keep me buying more supplies, more inks and papers and things like that to be able to make the videos without, um, you know, just being 100% out of pocket for it. It really does. It really does help, and I really do appreciate it. So there, I, I kind of struggled on the end of this one. I just... I had gotten it down to a little too sharp of a point right there and I was I was trying to kind of soften things up. I think I just I went so overboard with the um the metallic that I did kind of leave this one my center line in this one stayed a little wider than I normally would prefer it but you know it just it's not awful, and it does give a different look to the painting so that uh, things don't come out exactly the same. Although, I, I challenge you to make an alcohol ink painting that comes out exactly the same as anybody else's. Uh, that's one thing about this. You know, uh, you all certainly feel free to try to, you know, copy any of these paintings that you would like. I don't mind a bit. That's one reason that they're on here is so that you can, you know, look at what I'm doing and try and do it yourselves. Uh, it doesn't bother me at all. But, uh, you know, you'll find out that you might come out with something similar and use the exact same colors, but you cannot just completely copy someone else's alcohol ink. It's uh, with abstract anything, pretty much, you're not going to have an exact copy no matter what you do. I, well, I guess some people could, but I certainly can't. Um, the The best that I can hope for is something similar enough for me to be happy with. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I, I mean, any of you all who are worried about that, don't worry about that. Please feel free. Use the same colors, you know, use the same style. If I didn't want anyone trying to emulate my style, I certainly would not put it on YouTube. So, you know, feel free, do whatever you want. And uh, if you have questions, feel free to ask. I try to answer all the questions. You know, it might take me a, a day or so sometimes to get back to you. I try to get back quickly, but at times there's just too much going on uh, in with life to uh, to be able to to check my YouTube messages as often as I probably should. So I just did the same pattern here as I did before. And, you know, for, for those of you who are new, notice I keep my dryer very close to the paper. Um, be careful because I've actually hit my paper before. I've hit my inks before with my dryer. The end of it's got little spots of metallic, especially colors and stuff all over it. But I keep it very close because the higher up that I hold it, the better the chances are that that ink is going to just 
take off and go in more than one direction at a time. By keeping it low to the paper and coming in from the side, you are you have much better control over where the ink goes. So I'm going to, I'll take a second too to say thank you to you all who have been subscribing to my channel and who are clicking like on the videos. I just, I love to see that. I love to see that people are, are interested in this and, uh, you know, that they're liking what I'm doing. I, I really do appreciate you all. Now, some of you all that have been with me from the very beginning, when I first started this channel, I just, y'all blow me away that you're still hanging in there with me after after some of my goofy voiceovers and my, my bad videos that I did in the beginning when I was just learning and did not know how to do anything, you know, had to put on the just horrible stock music from the... Uh, the video editor that I use, because um, I, I just, I was scared to death of having a, a royalty problem with music, so I wouldn't use anything other than these short little stock clips that I could find on the video editor that were royalty free, and uh, yeah, so they would be about 30 seconds long, and I'd have to go in and just repeat them over and over and over and over and over again. So, and it had not occurred to me at the time, and I didn't know how to do it either at the beginning, but it had not occurred to me to try to do a voiceover and take off the sound of the dryer and everything and, uh, you know, just do a complete voiceover like these. So, yeah, I'm really sorry about my first several videos where I was learning, getting my feet under me. I had never made a video before, period other than just videotaping the grandkids or our kids every now and then. And so I had never tried to do anything like this to put on YouTube or do any type of tutorial. So I hope that they're getting better. I hope that you all are learning uh, from watching them. You know, feel free to let me know any of your complaints. I know that I have a horrible habit of saying you guys, and I have been trying to break myself of that, but... It's, uh, it's rather difficult just considering where I'm from, the way I was raised. That's everybody says you guys. So, but I'm trying. I know that uh, has been bothering some people that I say that. So, <clears throat> I, think it's, I think it's getting less. But I'm so used to saying it that it's one of those things I don't hear. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll go back and listen to a voiceover and be like, oh, crud, I did it again. And won't even notice that I've done it until I do the voiceover. <laughs> so, uh, or until I go back and listen to the voiceover. So, so I apologize for that if it's bothering anyone. I do my best. I don't think of all of you as guys. I do realize there's more women, by a vast majority, more women on my channel than men. Uh, just sort of a habit, and I think I got worse at it, because everything was you girls, actually, and uh, talking to our granddaughters that live with us, and then our grandson was born, and for a little while, our daughter, uh, who's his mother, she stayed with us for a little while after he was born, and I couldn't keep saying you girls, because then it was, you know, a boy and two girls, so it just turned into you guys, because, I don't know, you kids, just sounds like I'm fussing at him. I go, hey, you kids, come here. It just, I didn't like that. So, um, so you guys got to be used a lot more by me, which makes it even harder to break the habit. I have got another video that um, I've got to finish up that I'll be posting sometime in the next week or so, probably, where I did some gold foil on one. Um, I used the uh, Liquitex varnish as sort of a glue medium. I just used a small brush and, and some Liquitex after I was done with the painting. And I was trying to do sort of a different style of painting, and I absolutely did not get what I wanted. But I don't think that it's just completely hideous either, so um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on that. And uh, 
hopefully get that posted sometime within the next week or so after this one and let you all see what you think. And that's one I think that I might actually try putting on a wooden panel and resining over top of it. So we'll see. I don't know. That, there might end up being a part two to that video for that one. But that'll give you all something else to to uh, wait for. That This one has actually quite a lot of gold foil on it. And that video turned out a lot longer than I expected. And I still actually need to do a little bit more on it. So we'll... Uh, Hopefully it won't bore you all to death. Although any of you that get bored, feel free, you know, hit the mute button if you don't want to listen to me jabber on for 45 minutes or an hour. Uh, and Or fast forward, skip through, hit the parts you want. So, all right. as the The only really tricky part to these and that are shaped kind of like this is when you get down in here. Where your your branches kind of come together because I just feel like they look better if I can get my colors blended a little bit down in there. You know, I don't just want, okay, red stick, gray stick, gray stick. I don't want that. And where, where they come together, I want to have a blend of both of those shades in there. Um, not, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't even know how to explain it. I'm, I'm hoping you all get what I'm saying here. So I just, I like for it to look like it's, it's completely grown together there. Like it, it, it really goes together. Like it had come up in all one piece and then split off and changed to its individual color as it goes out. So that's why I do a decent amount of work on these, these, joints sort of where they come together because I do want to have that little bit of color blend in there just I, I just feel like it looks better that's that's just me you might like it the other way and there's certainly nothing wrong with that that's uh you know art is a, just an incredibly individual thing and so you know some people are going to look at this style of painting and think that it's just the most gorgeous thing they've ever seen and other people are going to look at it and say seriously <laughs> i would never have that so you know it, it's just a an individual thing like i had one comment on a painting that i did a little while back somebody made the comment that they thought they could do this because they had no creativity whatsoever. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'm pretty sure that's not a compliment, but <laughs> all right. <laughs> so um, I did, I did kind of get a chuckle out of that though. <laughs> I thought it was a little bit funny. So, and those of you who have tried this, you know, if you have no creativity whatsoever, you're, you're not going to be able to do this. You've, you've got to have a lot of patience and, a little creativity and uh, yeah, it's it's harder than it looks. Those of you who have done this know it, it's it's not quite as easy as it looks. Once you get started, uh, you get the general idea of what I mean by that. So I was trying to check it out there and see. I think I have gotten to the end and gonna let you all see that shimmer and how you know the ink kind of blended in there <coughs> with and and became a little bit of the red color so uh, thank you all again for watching for hanging with me through another one of these I would love it if you all would give me a thumbs up click like on there click subscribe if you haven't subscribed to my channel already and that way, you know, click the bell and you'll be notified anytime I do upload a new video so you don't have to worry about missing any of them. So I love you all. I really, really appreciate um, the, all the support, all the wonderful comments and the thumbs ups that I get. And um, you all are just all awesome. I have, I feel like I have made just a whole huge group of new friends here on this channel. And you all mean the world to me. I will uh, be back with you all sometime soon with another 
uh, new alcohol ink painting, hopefully with this one that's a little bit different than a style you've seen me do so far. So I will be back soon, y'all. Have a great day. Bye, everyone.